Okay, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Today I'd like to talk about a vector signal generator that you folks can buy on eBay. It's the uh, USRP B200. A quick overview of uh, what this little device can do to see if it will meet your application. Uh, on eBay, you can pick them up for around 500 bucks. Now, for those of you that think that's a bit high, uh, currently, if you go to Edis Research or National Instruments, they're pretty much charging over two grand for these things now. So, National Instruments is getting a little too greedy. And uh, I saw these on eBay and I did purchase one. And I'm here to do a review to let you know that uh, it works and has just the same performance as something costing $2,000. So I figure I'd let everyone know. Anyway, cost on eBay, 500 bucks. Uh, frequency output range, 70 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. And I've been able to get it to up to a 20 megahertz streaming bandwidth. It can do smaller bandwidths, pretty much 40, 50 kilohertz sample rates all the way up to 20 megahertz sample rate. So if that works for you, then you may want to consider buying this. Works with GNU radio, uh, transmit port, receive port. I basically just went to eBay, searched for USRP P200, and a whole bunch of listings came up. You can also get the uh, B210 as well, if you're interested in that. That's a two port device that has two transmit ports and two receive ports. So if those of you out there making simple arrays or something may want to purchase that. And again, both these are about one third or more uh, of the cost of the National Instruments prices. So National Instruments just getting a little too greedy, probably because they got too many managers on the program. So I figured I'd save you guys a shortcut here and uh, just get them direct from eBay which is probably the same place National Instruments is buying them and then giving you a large markup charge. All right, enough of that. So how does this thing work? To see the details of driver and everything, go see my uh, USRP uh, B200 video, but um, I detail how to set that up. But basically when you plug the thing in, I always open up Device Manager and uh, this, this will appear. Once you plug it into the USB port, it lets you know that it's there, alive, and uh, ready to go. All right, now some testing with this thing. So one of the first things I do with any kind of these uh, IQ modulator devices, I always just send it a simple uh, tone or complex tone, and I want to see how bad the spurs and everything are. So I've noticed with uh, this device, that I have to have the amplitude at one half scale. So I don't know why that is, some driver problem. But anyway, when I made it a half here, the spurs and all the spurious signals just vanished and went away. Well, not went away, but they were at least uh, 50 to 60 dB down, which is good enough for my work. So what exactly is the signal source? Well, it's actually doing this function up here, this e to the negative j. Uh, mega T with the amplitude of a half and really what that all means is that because this is blue we're sending this a complex signal so it's a cosine wave and a sine wave now what does this negative 2 megahertz mean well basically means we're going to make a signal that is going to be 2 megahertz below whatever is the transmit frequency so in our case we made the transmit frequency equal to 180 megahertz so in ideal world, we should expect to see a signal at 178. And lo and behold, we do have a predominant signal at 178. And then we see these guys here. So this delta 2, this is what's called the LO leakage. Um, that's very common in any kind of analog IQ modulator. We look here, delta 2 is 52 dB down, so, you know, not too bad. Uh, delta 3, this is what's called the uh, image. This is the 
uh, image of this signal and he is at least um, 64 db down so not too bad and uh, this d4 guy this is the guy that um, uh, when I had the amplitude equal to 1, he was way up here. So by scaling the amplitude down to 0.5, this guy completely vanished. So if you're interested in not having spurious spurs, uh, you probably want to set the scaling to a half like I did. So max power is minus 10 dBm. But um, this is the uh, performance. Now, some of you out there thinking, well, if I bought the one from National Instruments, I would probably get better performance. I uh, hate to disappoint you. I had the same results. So as far as I can tell, folks, the eBay unit is uh, just the same, only a lot cheaper. All right, here's the same thing, but now we're coming out at one gigahertz here, right? So that's why we have a tone at uh, 998, basically two megahertz below two gigahertz and the spurs are still well down 56 dbc so pretty good stuff i mean not i mean for this price point anyway that's uh that's pretty darn good uh, as we get higher up here we're coming out at five gig you can start seeing we got a little bit more phase noise here uh, we just lost 10 db in power and our spurs are only about 43 43 db down so something to consider if you were hoping to use this for the five, six gig range. So how does arbitrary IQ work? Well, actually it works quite good. And here I am uh, playing an IQ file centered at one gigahertz. And we have turned the spectrum analyzer here into spectrogram mode. So we see our waterfall. And basically, that's just me playing a, uh, a binary file, again, scaling it to the 0.5 and then sending it to the uh, device. And it comes out at one gigahertz with a 50 kilohertz sample rate. And again, I've been able to have sample rates from 40 kilohertz, say, all the way up to 20 megahertz. So pretty impressive device. And here's the gain. I've been keeping everything at a gain of 60 dB. This is the center frequency. And for the transmit port, you have to select this guy, the TXRX. All right, so who's this B200 for? I would say small engineering research firms, definitely colleges and schools. I mean, if you got students dropping, you know, 20, 30 K a year, I think the university can afford 500 bucks uh, for some lab work, but um, that's just me. I would say it's for the serious radio experimenter, those on the cutting edge of technology, <laughs> whatever that means. Um, I would say it's, it's probably a good project for anyone doing communications research. And again, for 500 bucks, it's a fairly low cost option. I mean, folks, you you want to talk about vector sig gens, some brand new units you can get from Siglint or uh, Rigel. Probably going to push upwards of about uh, eight thousand dollars or more. So not exactly a cheap uh, option. So again, it's all relative, I guess. But anyway, I just put in uh, USRP B200 from eBay. You'll get a whole bunch of listings, uh, sort by lowest price, and uh, you'll find a couple there. They'll all be around 500 bucks, which again is easily one third the price of uh, what National Instruments is charging. All right, I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is the GMR 140 radio show.